I got a soul cauldron is a new legendary artifact for only 2 mana, and it has 3 different abilities on it. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. Second, creatures you control with plus 1 plus 1 counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha Salt's Cauldron. And that takes us to the last ability, tap it, exile target card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control. So first of all, it actually interacts with the graveyards that your opponents are trying to do. You can actually exile anything, not creatures only. Except that when you exile a creature, that's when you get plus 1 plus 1 counters. But you can exile key cards from an underworld breach strategy, or just make sure that that graveyard stays really low. The second part of this card is Voltron. Or, well, you're putting plus 1 plus 1 counters on your creatures, and you can make your creatures grow big, and you can attack with your creatures. But there are creatures that are actually interested in increasing their power, such as Cisei. The more power Cisei has, the more expensive things you can actually tutor for. And that is great! But here's a cool thing, Cisei often utilize various creatures to create one card combos, like Bloom Tender. Or things like Giganta and Selvala Heart of the Wilds. And if they would end up inside a graveyard, then you could give one of your creatures their activated ability to tap for mana onto, let's say, Cisei. And suddenly you can rebuild. Key combo creature cards that you've lost can be gained back, or activated abilities of key combo creature cards could be gained back. I mean, sometimes people are even killing your Emil the Blessed. And that's a creature card with an activated ability that you could give to Cisse. And Cisse can easily tutor for this thing quite efficiently. And the creature that is gaining the ability is no longer suffering from summoning sickness because that creature has probably been in play for a while. This actually reminds me of Necrotic Ooze. As long as Necrotic Ooze is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all creature cards in all graveyards. A typical example is using Necrotic Ooze with Bloom Tender. So Bloom Tender is in your graveyard, suddenly Necrotic Ooze taps for a lot of mana. And then you can untap your Necrotic Ooze with something like a Naxaw click. And the target opponent removes the top card of his or her library from the game until end of turn. You may play that card. This means that you would, in theory, create an infinite loop where you generate infinite mana and exile infinite cards from your opponent's libraries. And you could do something of the same thing with Agatha Soul Cauldron. In fact, there's a lot of different strange tricks that you can actually do. But I actually don't think tutoring for this as a plan A strategy is that good. You have better things you can do with your demonic tutor. I personally think that Agatha Souls Cauldron is something of an opportunity card. It's something that is great to tutor for when everything is set in motion, but it's never really your plan A. It is just something that naturally becomes available and good for you throughout the game. And that is why Cisei is the best commander for it, because Cisei can tutor for it. So if the game has been going wrong, you have been interacted with, then you could bring back those activated abilities from your graveyard and like rebuild, go for the combo again, so to say. Or use this to interact with someone's graveyard, tutoring for it, exiling a keycard from someone's Undul Breach graveyard to interact. That's good as well. But sitting and building up a combo with this thing is a little bit slow. It's something that can absolutely happen, but I think you play it for the other reasons first, and that this is just a good card along the road eventually. There are other commanders that could consider Agatha Souls Cauldron. I mean, Tyem is milling himself, he's fueling the graveyard with options, and could actually bring back the artifact into play. He is also quite interested in counters in general. However, it's kind of an anti-synergy. With a God of Souls Cauldron, you want to keep the counters, and in this case, you want to, with time, you want to remove them, you want to eat them. But it's not wrong. However, I've actually never seen a Necrotic Ooze played inside time, even though I actually think it maybe should be, but whatever. Thrasius is also a commander that could consider the artifact as well. I mean, he's building all kinds of strange combos, so he's definitely something to consider when it comes to everything? 
In the end, I actually think a lot of commanders could actually benefit from this thing, depending on the build. But I think that Cisse is, in the end, the big winner. Also, when we look at the first ability on Agar Assault's Cauldron, you may spend mana as though it were of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. This means that Cisse's activated ability no longer con demands all five different colors. You could use Mana Crypt and Soul Ring to activate her. That's good. As there are creatures and legendary creatures with activated abilities that will generate a lot of mana, and at the same time we have creatures that could untap and basically create a loop with this thing, where you could make your Agathosaurus Cauldron into something really cool. But once again, I don't think you should go for that as a plan A strategy, because you don't need to, this is just a great card on its own. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it at the very least. There's a lot of more cool cards from the new set, so more card reviews are coming up. I actually think this is gonna be a card that shows up now and then, here and there, but I think it's a specific great card for CSA.